In this video, we'll continue to modify the form body that is our Subaru hood. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to take part four of our form series, and we're going to continue to modify the form body that represents our hood. Last time when we created this hood, we noted that the crease line that we created moved its way a little bit further away from where that line actually should be. So we need to move that over, and we also need to take care of the back edge of the hood because it's not going to be straight on the car. We want to make sure that it has a nice arc, even though we don't have that top blueprint. So to get started, we're going to go to Modify, Edit Form, and I'm going to begin by grabbing all these back edges, and I'm going to simply pull them back a little bit. And then I'm going to move my way over and grab this edge, and I'm going to pull it back a little bit as well. And then this vertex here, and I'm going to pull it back. And just by simply doing that, we've already added curvature to the back of the hood, but I want to make some slight adjustments in this area, moving this vertex. And this can be really hard to do in smooth display, so we can always hop over to that box display and we can take a look there. Everything looks pretty good, so I'm happy about that curvature on the back, but you can see that we have this sort of section here where uh, the hood is sort of raised up here and then it drops off at the edge. That's something that we probably want to address as well. So we're gonna do this by going to our right view and we want to make sure that everything in terms of the curvature looks good. And what I think I'm seeing here is I want to take this edge and potentially that edge, but at least this edge for now. And I want to pull this down slightly. And then you'll notice that on the back here, we have a couple of these edges and uh, this one here in particular that look like they're possibly raising up. So I'm going to rotate my view slightly and I want to take a look. So this vertex here, I'm going to go to the right view and I want to pull that down slightly. So I'm bringing it down just a little bit. And this one here, I'm going to bring back a little bit. And same thing about this, I'm going to pull that back a little bit. And then potentially bring this one up slightly and take a look. So it looks pretty good. Um, probably could do a little bit more work. Again, this is you know, partially an art form. It takes some time to play around with these. I might bring this one up just a little bit. And then that looks pretty good to me. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with those results. And again, we can always continue to modify these shapes. But what I'm looking for here is this back edge is a nice smooth transition. And even though we've got this section here where um, we're blending all these shapes together, I have that nice smooth transition. One thing that I haven't mentioned to, to this point yet is that the patches that we're working with, these faces, we generally like to have these as four-sided. That's going to be the best in terms of our geometry. But there are some instances where it makes sense to go to a three-sided patch. It can potentially cause some problems, but in geometry like this, I might be able to actually take this into a three-sided patch. And I'm going to try to do that by going to Modify and Insert Point. I'm going to come from a vertex here, and I'm going to change this to simple and see if it'll let me grab it. I want to go there to there to there, and I want to say OK and see what happens. So that does not look very good. So I'm going to do Control Z Undo. I'm going to go back to Modify Insert Point, and I'm going to try Exact and see what it lets me do. So with exact, it wants me to grab the midpoint here because what it's going to be trying to do is it's going to try to uh, divide those up. So exact isn't going to work, but let's just try a single edge here and see what happens. So that result isn't very good, but let's try something first. Let's select this edge and let's hit delete. Now, so my result isn't looking very good, so I'm going to undo that. And I'm going to focus on just using these four-sided patches for this geometry. But what we can do is we can move some of these closer together. It becomes problematic, but what we can actually end up doing is we can use one of the modify tools that allows us to weld vertices. So if I want to pull these two vertices together, that's how I can make a triangular patch without adding anything else. If we go to our box display, it looks pretty good here, but you'll note that these two edges are extremely close together. That's how we're getting that crease. So we have to be extremely careful 
with uh, our geometry, our underlying geometry. But if we go back to our smooth display, that doesn't look very good, but I'm gonna pull that over one more time. And I wanna pull these two together. And uh, I'm just looking at these results. Go back to my box display. It looks okay here, but on the smooth display, it doesn't look very good. It's just not giving me the result that I was hoping for. So I'm probably not going to continue to pursue this, but it's always a good idea to just play around, add a few more points, see what it looks like. We can always use undo. So I'm gonna say, okay. I'm gonna to go to my display settings and I'm gonna just turn on shaded and let's hide these blueprints. When we hide the blueprints and we rotate this around, you can see that the transition actually looks pretty good even though the underlying patches um, seem to be a bit problematic. We also have some inspection tools, curvature map analysis, which will let us take a look at the curvature. One thing that we can do is we can modify the scale and as soon as we get the scale a little bit higher, we can start to see these curvature changes. So what we're looking at is this sharp crease here, and we're actually looking at it transitioning to a, basically a smooth curvature underneath. We can change it to bands, which helps us get a little bit more division. We can do principal minimal and max, and we can do the Gaussian curve. If you do max, you can see that we've got that edge transitioning, and where we have that triangular patch, the curve is actually jumping around. What we would like to see is that this curve carries on and just disappears and we don't have any of these red lines here. I'm gonna hit cancel so I don't save the analysis. I'm gonna go back to my display and bring back those visible edges. Now, before I go too far with this, remember that on our front view, this curve actually needs to be quite a bit farther over. So I'm gonna box select all those edges or faces, use modify edit form, and I'm gonna to try to bring them over. Now, when I do this, what I'm looking to do is, uh, is to get them a little bit closer to where that crease actually is. And then I'm gonna double click on this edge and I wanna bring this edge over as well and make sure that the curvature still works. I'm, I might need to make some adjustments, potentially pull some of these edges down, but that looks okay. Once again, I'm not super happy with these triangle patches, but the main thing is that the transition between all of this geometry looks good. So we wanna make sure that that is the point we focus on. I'm gonna go back to a box display and I wanna address or at least mention the proximity of these two edges and just how close they are in order to get that crease. Now, um, this is something that we have to be extremely careful with. Uh, we wanna make sure that we are very aware of how close these are. I'm gonna pull them apart just slightly and I'm gonna to go to my smooth display you can see in my smooth display uh, how far that pulls them apart. We're gonna say okay. And I'm gonna go back to my display settings. Once again, there are shortcut keys, control in the number four and control in the number six. So if you like using shortcut keys, you can do that. But I wanna make sure that you guys know where these menus are. So now that we've gotten rid of that and we're just simply taking a look at the image here, um, the crease looks, it looks pretty good. It still looks good. It's not as tight as it was before, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. The important thing is that the crease works and we really can't see that until we take a look at things like uh, the curvature map analysis or even the zebra analysis. We do a zebra analysis of this. Um, what we can do is we can see the direction, uh, the curvature. So if we zoom in, you can see that the curvature is uh, sort of blending up the hood. If we view this from the top, should give us a better idea. So you see that we've got these sort of large bands. We can add the additional repeats. Uh, what we, we have is we've got these large bands in the center, and then we've got the curvature as it goes up to this edge. And what we would expect to see, or what we would hope to see, is that these zebra stripes follow that edge. So if we're carrying this back, we go all the way to the end. This area here, where we have this sort of uh, swirl or this pocket, this is where those triangular patches are coming in. And those can be potentially problematic, um, but let's just follow this all the way back. And you can see that again, there these are sort of dropping off. And then we've got a double section here. This double section is, uh, is where we're transitioning back to those others. So um, if we go back to control and the number six, we bring those back, you can see that uh, some of this geometry, is, it's likely just not gonna work for us. It's not gonna give us a good result. 
So this might be something that we need to divide up again. So um, we can always use undo, but we can always go back and do insert point, and we can turn this back into a box by just simply adding another point up here and then deleting the triangular patch. So once I delete that triangular patch, I've only got one down here, so it's not leading into the edge. We can go back, take a look at our zebra analysis and see if that helped at all. So it looks a little bit better. I'm gonna increase the repeats. The additional repeats makes it a little bit more apparent in these tight curvature areas. You can see that we've got some curvature here and it looks okay. Um, it's still breaking up a bit at the back, but it's not nearly as bad. And we can double check that by going to our curvature map analysis as well. I'm gonna to go to the principal max, and now you can see that that red edge disappears here. So uh, this is exactly what I would hope to see. I probably wanna carry that red edge further down to maintain that crease, but I'm really happy with the result of how it sort of fades away on the back. That's exactly what I'm looking for. So in order to fix that, what we need to do is we need to pull this back a bit further. And once again, we can use modify edit form. Uh, if we wanna go to the box display, uh, we can take this and we can pull it back. And also we wanna notice that this edge here is a bit further away from the other. Uh, and that's relative to the rest of the point. So if we look at it from the top, they are extremely close together. If we look at it from a uh, side view, I'm gonna go ahead and rotate this around, double click the middle mouse wheel. If we rotate it around, uh, you can see that these are really close together in this view. And we wanna keep that consistent. Keeping that consistent is what's gonna give us that nice crease. Another thing that we wanna make sure that we address or take a look at is the difference between the, uh, the height here. Now, the reason that that's important is because the difference in that height is going to affect the blend. So this point right here, or that vertex, I actually wanna bring that in, and I'm gonna control select all of these as well, and I'm gonna bring those in, and that's going to accentuate that crease. All right, so now that we have that, let's go back to our smooth display. Let's go back to our visual style of just shaded, and let's take a look at the result. So now you can see we've got that nice crease and it carries along. There is a bit of a ridge here, and that's something that we probably need to take care of. Could potentially just be a result of the shading, but it does look like we have sort of an accentuated ridge in the middle of the hood. So that's something we wanna take a look at. But now we've got this, this ridge and this transition in the right place, and it gives us a good, uh, you know, a good starting point to work on for that very critical feature on the hood of this car. Let's bring back our front view. It looks like it's in the right place. It looks like it's going about the right direction. Obviously, we could bring this whole front edge down if we want to use modify edit form. We can just bring it down closer to that line on the bumper. I'm going to bring this up a little bit. And um, so, yeah, now it looks pretty good. Of course, we, we need to carry it on, but that's going to take quite a bit more work to get that transition. We're going to need to subdivide this up more. And it's really important that we get the bulk of the curvature down before we start to add more edges. So I'm really happy with these results. I'm going to go back to more of an isometric view. And we will address that, uh, that shape on the hood, something that we definitely want to make sure that we take care of. And the reason it's there is because we have these two edges together. If we double click and delete that and bring the other edges. So wh what you can see now is that transition is probably a little bit more realistic but it's got that, that sharper transition here. One other thing that we can do is, is we can select that edge and we can try to use the option to, um, to simply slide that edge, see if we can pull it and, and affect the curvature and smooth that out a bit more. So again, control in the number four, take a look at the results. We still have that crease, but again, it's just something that we're gonna have to work on to make sure that we are matching the underlying curvature. So. Uh, once again, it does take quite a bit of work. All of these little details, if you're trying to really replicate something like um, an actual car hood, all of these little details are extremely important. So it's a good idea to get the bulk of the shape done. And once you're happy with the, the general shape of these large panels, then you start adding in those small details by order of importance. So in the case of our hood, it was important that we added this, uh, this feature, this crease, 
And then from adding that crease, we began to add more detail, um, something that we could take a look at and address. But now that we have this triangular patch here, it's going to be a little bit more difficult for us to, to sort of fix that curvature in the hood. But it's something that we can certainly address. But at this point, we've done a really good job in getting that crease. If you've had any difficulty following along um, each step of the process, I'm going to put the save in the description of the video. So you can always pick up from the save point that I'm using in the video. But it is really important that you play with these tools. It's not going to be perfect. It's going to take a lot of practice and a lot of time. Um, and even myself, I've been doing this for many years with a lot of different software, and it still takes a lot of time. You have to try things, see if they work, undo or delete them, and try a different option. So that process, that discovery process, is really important to learning and understanding what the tools do. But at this stage, let's make sure that we do save before we move on. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.